Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I'm back for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Real Housewives of Atlanta was a tad bit boring to me. I'm over Nene and Cynthia in their, uh, I want to call it a bromance. That's not what it is. Um, their kitty clicking relationship, child, I don't know what to call it. Okay, their sisterhood, <laughs> I think not. Personally, I feel like the same thing that has happened consistently throughout their entire relationship just happened in one big scene tonight, which was Nene cried and made Cynthia feel bad, or at least forced Cynthia into being the bigger person. And so Cynthia runs after her and makes sure that she's okay and, you know, apologizes for the things that she said without any real apology from Nene beforehand, as if Nene has not gone far and beyond with the insults and she continually tries to make it seem as if Cynthia is some person that we don't know about but then cries and says how terrible it was for her when Cynthia said she was a toxic friend well guess what trick you're a toxic friend I don't know if you don't believe it or you think if you fake cry about it we're gonna change our minds about it and I don't care how much you like Nene Nene is a toxic friend Friends that are toxic, i.e. friends that only get along with their other friends when they are up their asses, okay? Or they're going along with everything that Nene says. That's the only time that everything's all good. And even then, sometimes she'll check you, drag you, and talk to you like you one of her children. So, yeah. Kenya and Nene are so much alike. It's probably why they don't get along. But yes, the show. Okay. There's a montage of all these moments between Cynthia and Nene throughout the years. The friendship contract, Cynthia always being there for Nene, Nene giving Cynthia compliments here and there, you know, their friendship. Nene feels that Cynthia is to blame because she did seven interviews talking about how toxic Nene was. Cynthia feels like Nene makes everything about her. Everything. Everything has to be about Nene and how she feels. And yes, I'm sorry, but she did do that. Last season, everything was about her. Greg's cancer was about Nene. Eva's damn wedding was about Nene. Okay, Cynthia's uh, Bailey cellar opening was about Nene because she was mad that Kenya made it about her. It was never about Cynthia, though. Amazing. I'm going to tell you something, Cynthia. I know people like to think that you must be some underlying, you know, messed up person. I don't see that, okay? I don't think anybody's perfect. And I think that Cynthia knows how to play this game just as well as everybody else, okay? I'm not underestimating Cynthia's shadiness. I'm not at all, okay? Or her ability to jump on a bandwagon and, you know, just kind of go with the flow regardless to what she may truly feel. But at the end of the day, I think what we see is what we get with Cynthia, just like we do with most of y'all. We know y'all, okay? I know you feel like we don't know y'all because y'all only show us what y'all want us to see. But ultimately, girl, we know y'all. And we know, Nene, that you've been a toxic friend. You've been this way. It's just that Cynthia has gotten some, some penis and decided that she doesn't need this anymore. She's going home. Nene feels like Cynthia needs to hear her out. And I just kind of feel like if you're not going to come from a place of apology yourself, I don't know what the hell she needs to hear. It's just, you know, come and listen to me make you feel bad so you can apologize to me as if I've done nothing to you. I'm sorry, but that's the way it comes off to me. The way this whole shit was orchestrated. So Nene is working in her store and Marlo comes in. Cynthia sent her a gift inviting Nene to the wine cellar so that they can have a sit down and discuss some things, have a clear picture of how one another is feeling and they both feel as if they owe their friendship, you know, a, a shot in order to get to a better place. Like they owe each other this conversation. Like, okay, fine. Nene says that she really misses the sisterhood amongst the girls. So she's going to have her sisterhood brunch and she's going to invite all of the ladies, even the ones that she's not that fond of, i.e. Kenya. And, you know, we're going to talk it out and just see if we can come to a mutual respect and understanding amongst the sisters. Cynthia goes to meet with Kenya looking cute in case she has to check a bitch, okay? Because you know, she's still not really feeling Kenya all that hard since Kenya tried to throw her under the bus with the cookie bitch. Now, I have gotten it, y'all. I got the DMs from y'all. A lot of my people in my DMs, I appreciate y'all when y'all send me stuff I have not seen. I really do love and appreciate y'all so much for that. 
A couple of the bonbons sent me the cookie ladies mug shot. Okay, apparently she was arrested three years ago for fraud, financial fraud at that. I said, girl, you getting arrested for fraud at 40? <laughs> Something of a retardation happened there. I guess when you think you're, you're so gorgeous, you don't think you have to do anything by the book. Or you don't think you have to have any progression of mind and spirit as a 40-year-old woman that should know better at this point. But you know what? Keep on trying to get away with illegal shit just because you think you're cute. Let's see how that works out for you. Being a cookie lady and an extra on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Girl, get out of my face you with this. <laughs> like, get out of my face with this. Cynthia says that she puts Kenya on ice because of this whole cookie lady situation. Cynthia does a little shady prayer, okay, of which she prays to God because I know she smelled like asphalt from being rolled over by the bus <laughs> that Kenya drove over her ass last week. And of course, they talk about it. Basically, Kenya feels as if Cynthia did her wrong when she told Tanya uh, about the whole backstory of Kenya's line of questioning in Toronto. Meaning, she was sitting at that table insinuating that your man has this gorgeous woman who he talked to down at the bar. Kenya, however, does apologize to Cynthia for, you know, driving the bus over her and then stopping and backing up and driving it over her again. I kind of feel like Cynthia let Kenya go too easy on that. Like, that shit was messed up. And I really feel like, you know, I know everybody kind of feels like it's fair game because it's the show and we need the drama. But somebody should have read the shit out of Kenya in person and it shouldn't have been as easy as, oh, you was wrong, girl. Oh, I was wrong, girl. I'm sorry. Like, that's all it was. And I felt like it should have been more of that because I, <laughs> I told y'all she stretched that shit like spandex last week with the cookie bitch. OK, she stretched it out. And I feel like somebody should have stretched out her punishment. Cynthia then confides in her about Mike and, you know, how she worries about him and all of the infidelities in his past and how that might bleed through in there relationship and I know we all think that he didn't you know blown the back out of one of those many female friends that he invited over to the house so Cynthia has some things on her mind and Kenya you know a true abused woman right now <laughs> sorry y'all I don't mean for it to sound like that Kenya may not be being abused but she's definitely in a toxic relationship right now and when women are trying so hard to keep a man they will sometimes give you the most slavery advice they can give you as it pertains to trying to keep a man and Kenya says that if Mike learned from it that's all that matters and I'm like shit I'd be keeping my good and bad eye on that nigga okay mm -hmm. Cynthia and Nene meet up dum, da -da -dum, dum, dum. you know you gotta play the serious music do it 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 da -da -da -dum, dum. I don't know why we got into Missy Elliott but I'm gonna let it roll whoa Whoa, whoa, come on y'all, y'all know it. I was looking for affection, so I decided to go. Swing that dick in my direction, we'll be out of control. <laughs> I'm sorry y'all, they ain't got nothing to do with this. <laughs> I was bored, anyway, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> Cynthia and Nene. Okay, so Nene doesn't like that Cynthia said that she's a toxic friend. Cynthia says she feels as if Nene just threw her away, okay? Like she was cigarette ashes on the floor. Okay, that one went. Ha <laughs> ha! Finally, I'm back on track. Nene feels like Cynthia saying she was toxic was a lot. And Cynthia says, yeah, it might have been harsh. You know what I mean? <laughs> but honestly, I feel like the next thing Cynthia should have said, it was true, though. Like, she should have said that, but she didn't. Because, you know, Nene is starting to, <laughs> you know, it was really hard. I'm a toxic friend. <laughs> you really wanted people to think I was a toxic friend. <laughs> Bitch, we thought that already. She didn't have to say it. We knew it. We've seen you. We've seen you. Now, my whole thing is you can call Cynthia weak and thirsty 
on television, but she calls you a toxic friend and all of a sudden you're the one that's been harmed. I just cannot. Cynthia feels like they both said some terrible things about one another. Nene is hell bent on trying to make it seem as if Cynthia is more in fault than she is. And I just don't agree with that. I think y'all both said messed up things about one another. And I also think that that is driven by the fact that Nene is a toxic person to be friends with, period. And Cynthia has gotten to a point in her life where she is tired of running behind her. Now, that's what I thought. And then Cynthia proceeded to run behind her this episode. I said, bitch, you ain't tired enough. I'd have let that bitch leave the table and been like, so we done taping? Because I'm not running out there after her. I'm tired of this shit. If she want to have a conversation, we can have a conversation. All of that pulling Nene to hug her when Nene was acting like she didn't really want to hug her. All of that shit made me mad. I was watching it and I was just like, oh my God, Cynthia, fucking stop. Stop trying to force it. Stop trying to make her be your friend. Stop trying to console her as if you did something so terrible to her. You are letting her win. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, y'all. That might be the immature side of me, but I was like, hell to the no, no, no. Okay? Meanwhile, Nene is sitting up there trying to strong arm the hug. Fuck all that. Especially since Nene got up and walked off because Cynthia was like, look, girl, I'm happy. I have I'm having a good life. You know, we don't need to worry about each other. Ain't nobody tripping because you try to make it seem like, oh, I'm so worried about you. But at the end of the day, I'm having a good life over here. That's what Cynthia was trying to say. And then Nene got upset. Well, girl, what you trying to say? I don't want you to have a good life. Well, that's how it seems. You seeming kind of like a hater, but she don't want to seem like that. So she gets up, she walks away. She, she's going to cry outside in front of the car, not in it, in front. Cynthia follows her ass out. Cynthia looked amazing. Like I'm annoyed with her, but I was like, oh my God, Cynthia. When she was walking and this hair and the black leather, you know, little tights or whatever and the cute, I was like, Cynthia, bitch, you are giving me life right now with the look, with the look, the look alone. Because the fact that you even running out here to talk to this strong arm bitch, I cannot. Oh, stiff shoulder ass hoe. She's crying about being called a toxic friend, but I don't see any tears. <laughs> Hmm. Nene says that Cynthia wanted people to think she was a horrible friend. Cynthia says she knows that she hurt her. She said things that hurt Cynthia as well. Nene apologizes and says that she didn't want to hurt Cynthia. That was never mind. Never wanted to hurt you. Oh, didn't you, bitch? When you called me weak, you wasn't trying to hurt me? Okay. Cynthia says that life is too short, girl. It's one thing that Greg's sickness taught us, and that is we can be gone at any moment now. So let's not even focus on the negative. Nene says that she's so glad that they talked and she's proud of her and the, the wine cellar is so nice she did a really good job and it's just like Cynthia needs Nene's validation Nene needs to feel as if Cynthia is going to run behind her and now we can work towards being cool again but ultimately Cynthia still feels as if Nene doesn't take any accountability I said I'm glad that you feel that way but it would have been better if you had expressed that to her instead of doing what you always do which is being the bigger person so Nene is having her brunch okay and she sent out an invite that was a play on words with the jungle and lion and basically all the girls show up in animal print so we can be messy and eat and drink together. That's all this is. Marlo is getting herself ready and she calls Portia. I said, how long it take a bitch to get ready? Lord have mercy. I'm just saying, like y'all all be so late to these events and I'm sorry, but this is the one time that I'd have been Kenya. I got here late my damn self. I sit here for 10 minutes and y'all ain't here. All right, I'm about to go. Like I'm not about to sit here and wait two and a half hours for a bitch to show up to her own event i'm not doing that i'm sorry now the only thing that probably would have kept me there was that paycheck am i am i getting paid just for being here or am i getting paid for how long i stay here let me know because <laughs> that'll be a deciding factor but Marlo talks to Portia and Portia says that I'm not going because it was an oh, aggressive ass invite and I just don't have time for the negative energy. And I'm like, girl, Portia, I'm not mad at you. Okay, I'm not mad at you, but I saw you in that little leopard skin dress giving round and juice. 
you going. <laughs> okay, giving all of that cat juice crown. So Eva and Cynthia ride together and Cynthia tells Eva about the meeting she had with Nene. And then Eva starts having contractions, y'all. They get her out the car and they get into the venue and Eva is having a hard time, okay? She is in the squatting position like she ready to kick this baby to the curb. And she's having these really tough contractions. Candy gets there. And Candy runs into she and Cynthia, I guess, as they were going to go and get into the car. It seemed as if they'd already decided they were going to go to the hospital. But Candy called Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie said, go to the hospital. Eva said she didn't want to go to the hospital. Dr. Jackie said, okay, then I'll teach y'all how to, how to, you know, deliver her baby right there on the floor at the restaurant. Okay. And so that's when Cynthia says, girl, let's not do that. Tanya gets there. Tanya looked amazing, first of all. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's very hard to wear animal print and not look cheap sometimes. And I think that she looked amazing with the Dolce & Gabbana animal print kind of glittered collar and, you know, lining of the white shirt in the paint. I was just like, Tanya, bitch, like who shops for you? <laughs> Where do you go shopping? When do you go shopping? I'm so interested. Like, I'm just saying, the look was everything for me. Just saying. But they get Eva out, you know, outside, help her take her sweatshirt off because she was hot and, you know, and they get her into the car and Cynthia takes her to the hospital. Candy and Tanya go back inside to sit and wait on Nene, who says she was 10 minutes out when Candy first got there. Okay. Then around three o'clock, Kenya got there. Okay. Kenya, you know, it's good to see you little shade towards Tanya. Tanya's like, <laughs> whatever, bitch. Like Tanya ain't really worrying about Kenya at all. But you know, they have a little conversation 10 minutes in Kenya's like, okay, I'm not waiting any longer. I gotta go. She really wanted to come there so that she can force some type of apology out of Nene, of which I don't think she was gonna get. So she might as well go on ahead and leave because she wasn't about to get that apology because she called you a water buffalo when you was pregnant. She's terrible. And, and I don't even think she's apologized to Portia for what she said to her. So I don't know why you think she gonna apologize to you, Kenya. She don't even like you. An hour and a half later, after Kenya left, because Kenya left at like 3.10, all right, right around 4.30, here comes Nene strolling in. And then with her, a large group of women of which we have never seen before, some who really should have thought about their weave and leave out choices before they got on screen and sat directly next to Nene at the table. Because I just kept looking at this lady and this jerry curl weave and how her leave out did not match. And I was just, ugh. But then they had this one lady that just had like a black bonnet on her head and she didn't have any makeup on except for lip and eye but I don't think she had any foundation on stunning stunning that's I, I kept looking at her I was like oh that lady pretty and she ain't got no makeup on I appreciate that a lot of these women seem like regular women but it also seemed like this might be the women that y'all pulled off the street or from the goodwill down at the doctor's office I don't know where y'all got these women from but they didn't seem like they knew Nene they didn't seem like they was friends like that we seen that one girl who we know is friends with Nene but it did seem kind of random and Candy was like what kind of sisterhood is this this is a fake sisterhood I don't know any of these women like nobody knew them candy nobody nobody knew them but apparently Nene has had this brunch before and it's for women who are you know business women to rub elbows and this is the first time she's invited all of the ladies to the event I said girl sure <laughs> sure when Nene finds out that Kenya left, she was like, uh -huh, uh, as much as these girls show up late whenever they want to, <laughs> whatever. Ain't nobody stunting Kenya, girl. I said, I know we not. Let's move on. Marlo gets there finally, okay, after the hours and hours it took her to reveal herself. <laughs> and they discuss Cynthia and Nene sit down and how she's glad that they had to sit down and how it'll never be the way it was before. But at least they can be cordial and be nice and not have the negative energy surrounding them, okay? Okay, she's happy that Cynthia came, even if she had to leave with Eva to go to the hospital. Marlo brings up how she talked to Portia and Portia said that she wasn't coming because she didn't want to be around any negative energy. And Nene says that, well, I don't know why she thought it would be negative. I mean, I didn't reach out to the girl so many times, like basically saying we've had conversations via text message. So I don't know why she was surprised that she got an invite to this brunch. Okay, whatever. And right as Nene is saying, look, I'm not about to kiss your ass, girl, okay? Just as she's talking about Portia, Portia and Shamia walk in. And Nene points out that Portia was late. 
Portia showed up 30 minutes after Nene got there. Girl, if you don't shut this shit up with this, I can't stand her, y'all. I cannot stand her. Portia says that Mother Diane convinced me that I should just come since she extended the invitation. And, you know, I talked to my friends. I talked to this one here and that one over there and this one over there. And you know what? I decided that I'm just going to come through and see what we got to talk about. So I'm ready for all of the lies and all of the truths. I'm ready for whatever y'all got. Okay, I said, all right, Portia. Okay, came dressed and ready ho. Nene says that she didn't want her to think it was going to be anything messy. It's just so that they can talk and get things out on the table and enjoy each other's company. I said, child, whatever. <laughs> Candy gets a call from Eva while they're in the middle of this conversation. And I think Candy was trying to get them to stop so that they can put the speakerphone on and everybody could hear what Eva was saying. But then Nene says, I'm talking to Portia right now. Okay, she was talking to Portia. She didn't want to be interrupted. So Candy took it to the side. When Candy was finally able to let everybody know what was going on with Eva we find out that she was dilated by just one centimeter so she's probably not gonna have her baby that day but you know it's still kind of scary because it's early on and the baby could be premature but we all know that Eva's baby came out beautiful and healthy so we ain't gotta worry too much about that at the end of it all, Candy says that she did not understand the point of this brunch. I said, child, I didn't either. I didn't either. But you know what it was about so y'all could tape and be messy and dressed in leopard like old bitches. But anyway, I'm an old bitch. I love leopard. It's fine. I love y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the review because I felt like the episode was kind of like, uh, <laughs> like I, you know, I think it's another one of those times where they thought it was going to be so explosive and it really wasn't. I'm over Cynthia and Nene. What else is going on? I'll see y'all in the next one.